Namaskaram. Well, should I say Merry Christmas? And because Santa is here, Christmas is here, Story Saturday has come a day in advance to all of you. Let's listen to this wonderful story from Strasbourg. And what it is about, you will get to know towards the end. So long ago, like all stories begin, in Strasbourg, in a big castle, lived Count Otto. He was a small boy, and as he grew up, he was a handsome man. All the maidens in the whole town, kingdom, looked at him and were wondering, will I be his wife? Will I be the countess? How will it be? But he did not turn an eye towards any of the maidens. Everybody called him stone-hearted. Well, it didn't bother him. On a Christmas Eve, he got all the knights together, all his companions and said, let's go for a treasure hunt. What do you say? Never know what we will get. And they went into the deep, deep forest area, all covered in snow, the fir trees. They, their horses trekked through the paths which were not even treaded before. Their horses' hoofs were the first to imprint the snow there. And as they kept searching and wandering and enjoying their journey, Count Otto was separated from his companions. He was left all alone. And he came to a place which was known to everybody in that town. It was a small, well, what? You guess. He heard the gurgling sound of water. He peeped in and it was this beautiful, white, sparkling water. Yes, it was a well. They called it the fairy well. And after such a long, arduous journey, which he really enjoyed, he was not tired, he just put his hand inside the water. <laughs> thinking it's going to be very cold. He was in for a surprise. The water was quite warm. And he started playing with the water. He put his hand a little more deeper to feel the warmth. And he was really stunned as to in this cold winter, where it is snowing and brrr, cold everywhere, how come this water is so warm? And as he was playing in the water, he felt two tiny hands caressing his palm. Felt weird. He felt tickled. And he was wondering what's happening. And slowly he took his hand out and he saw his gold ring was missing. How? What happened? Who was there? He thought. I will check the next day. It's already dark. Got onto his horse. <laughs> Stopped near his castle. Went in. Just couldn't sleep. Thinking about the mysterious events that had happened that day. He just plucked himself on the couch plunged and was in deep thoughts. What was there in that, in that fairy well? Who took my ring? I will go next day and figure out what it is. And as he was doing that, he heard some sound. He listened. It looked as if the drawbridge, which was the gateway to his castle, was being lowered. And he heard light footsteps on it. Who is coming this late? He wondered. And the footsteps grew louder. They were almost just outside his chamber. And he also heard a faint, beautiful, delicious music. 
delicious, yes. That's how it sounded to him. Felt like it was very, very juicy and beautiful for him to dance. Slowly went, opened the door and peeped. And what did he see there? They were numberless, infinite number of fairies, all clothed in beautiful, vibrant hues and sparkly clothes and all dancing to that music. I was wondering what's happening. Why did they come here? What are they going to do to me? It's Christmas Eve. And as he was thinking this, the fairies stopped dancing. They all looked in the direction of the door of the chamber on the other side. He also looked there and he was dumbstruck. It was this beautiful, beautiful maiden walking with her long black tresses falling, a beautiful silk satin gown which has caressed her body, which was so soft, and she walked. She came to Count Otto and said, I am Erstein. I've come here to pay a thank you note to your visit for Christmas to the fairy well. And here it is, your gold ring. He didn't even bother about his ring and he was just looking at Erstein. She took his hands, the music started to play, and they started to dance. And in a few moments, he was on his knees, looking at Erstein, saying, will you marry me? She said, yes, of course I will, but you should never, ever, ever utter the word death. If you do, poof, I'm gone in a moment. Or don't you worry when you are there, why should I be bothered about death? And the next day, on the Christmas day, their wedding was celebrated with great pomp and show. The whole town enjoyed and danced along with the fairies. And they lived happily ever after. Do you think that's where the story ends? No. They lived for many, many, many years. And one day, they had decided that they're going to some other town. He and all the other men were waiting. and Erstein was getting dressed. It took her a very, very long time. She couldn't decide which dress to wear, which crown to wear. And I'd forgotten to tell you, on the day, that day when Erstein had come, when the fairies were dancing, in the middle of the room where they were dancing, he had seen something which he had never, ever seen in his life. And you know what it was? It was this big, big Christmas tree. Ha, not as small as this, but a huge one. And it wasn't decorated with these lights, toys, or candles. They were decorated with diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, rubies, pearls, ornaments, bells, everything made of precious gems. And Coming back to this day where she was getting dressed, she couldn't choose which crown to wear, which tiara to wear or which gown to wear with that tiara and it took her a very, very long time. And after a couple of hours, she walked out looking like this beautiful princess. But Otto looked at her and said, What took you so long? It took you so long to get ready that I could send you as a messenger to the death. Lest had he just uttered that word, poof, Erstein was gone. He realized his mistake and looked around and said, Erstein, I'm sorry, please come back. Don't leave me alone. She was nowhere to be found. He immediately took his horse and rode to the fairy well, put his hand inside, went inside, emptied the fairy well. There were no fairies. There was no Erstein. He just rode back to his castle. Very sad. And all he could find were two small, tiny handprints on the arch of his entryway. He waited 
every single day for our team. And you know what he did? On Christmas Eve, every year, he decorated a tree, just like how it was decorated on that day when Erstein had come into his life waiting for her. But she never came. And he died. And they say the castle was in ruins. And all you can find even till date is just two hands of Erstein. And that is the legend of how a Christmas tree is decorated even today or how the first Christmas tree came into being. There are many legends, but I found this very interesting. And how about decorating your Christmas tree with rubies, diamonds, and emeralds? Possible? Well, don't blame me. Not, not at all possible. Maybe we could use the artificial gems, sequences, and make our Christmas tree as beautiful as ever. And let's all do it. Spread joy and spread the joy of giving. Let's just give with our heart and make everyone around happy, just like how Ernst Erstein made Count Otto's life. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful weekend, wonderful Christmas. And see you all next week in the same Story Saturday by Katha Mandalam with me. Anagha Prasad. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Hey, Rudolph the O. What's the song? Can you complete it for me? Have fun and see you all next Saturday. Thank you. Namaskaram. Bye bye.